Hey guys, it's Brandon, aka Be Rich Beauty, aka your beauty best friend. Happy Wednesday, y'all. Akon got carjacked. Kim Kardashian is being sued by ex-employees. And baby, the Real Housewives of Potomac trailer is here. We're talking about that and a lot more. You know what to do. Grab your tea, grab your beverage, let go. Hey, beauty besties. Happy hump day, y'all. We're halfway through the week. Ow. And there's a long weekend coming up, Memorial Day, which, you know, officially Memorial Day is like the official start of summer, honey. What do you guys have planned for the Memorial Day holiday? I know it's Wednesday and you're like, wow, you're already asking. I got plans. So what y'all got planned for the Memorial Day holiday? I want to know. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, but let's jump in to our first Topic. Now, the CDC is out here issuing new guidance and guidelines, and no, it has nothing to do with wearing masks or the whole COVID-19 pandemic. But most importantly, the CDC is over here issuing warnings telling us not to kiss our chickens and our ducks. Uh-huh. Do not kiss your backyard poultry of chickens and ducks. Now, y'all know I got questions. But before I dive into my questions, here's why you're not supposed to be out here kissing random chickens and ducks. So according to the CDC, there's a whole salmonella outbreak that's happening right now with backyard poultry. Baby, I've heard of street meat, but backyard poultry, that term is new to me. In addition to not kissing or hugging your backyard poultry, your chicken and your ducks, the CDC is also saying that you're not supposed to drink outside around them as well because, again, I guess the salmonella can transfer and do all the type of things that salmonella does, and then you end up with the whole salmonella outbreak. Is this how the people caught the whole hoof, foot, and mouth disease? I don't know. But apparently, don't kiss your chickens and ducks and don't drink around them. Now, here are my questions. People out there with backyard poultry, y'all out there giving y'all chickens morning kisses? Like, do y'all go out to really feed the chickens and y'all give the chicken its fees and y'all just bending down like, good morning, Mr. Rooster. Mwah. Hello, Henny the Penny, the, the chicken. Mwah. Those eggs are looking real great. Mwah. Like, who's kissing the chickens? I just need to know this. And for those that got backyard poultry, chickens, whether they're, they're, you're using them for farming and eggs and all the other stuff, or whether you just got chickens. Y'all you know, know I live in Miami, honey. The roosters be around here just in the streets, cock a doodle doodle all up in the early morning. And the, ah, whether it's random chickens or your domesticated chickens that you use for sustainability, you're not supposed to be out here kissing the chickens. And who started kissing chickens anyways? I personally like my chicken seasoned, not kissed, okay? I like my wet hot with lemon pepper sprinkles. And I got another question for you. CDC, y'all really got people out here picking up ducks and hugging them? So y'all telling me y'all going down to the pond, feeding the ducks the stale bread, and y'all giving the ducks uh, good old hugs, therapeutic hugs before y'all make it into duck pate? I just need to know these things. I have never in my early to mid 30 something years on this earth have heard about people running around out here in these streets. Baby, I know it's hard out here and we want kisses, hugs, and snuggles, but don't do it with your chickens and your ducks, okay, people? Unless you want the salmonella, but we don't want the manila going on around here. So, moving on. Singer-rapper Akon car got stolen while he was in Atlanta pumping gas. Now, y'all know I got questions, but before I ask my questions, I feel like we need to discuss a few things first. First thing first, Atlanta, this is what we doing nowadays? We carjacking people and stealing cars while the car is literally being filled with gas? Akon was on the passenger side of his car, filling it up with gas, when someone came through, opened up the car door, jumped in the car, and took off while Akon was at the car, filling it up with gas. Yeah, I mean, I know it's hard out here in these streets, but Atlanta, this is getting real extra ghetto. Now, we're stealing cars while the actual owner of the car is there. I guess that's what a carjacking is, but I'm just... I'm just so shook it, took it, and verklempt at the, the unmitigated gall of this carjacker while Acom was filling it up with gas. And I guess the guy, the guy was smart. He was like, well, if I'm going to steal a car, I'm make sure this car is on full, okay? Now, here's my other thing. I don't know if it's just me, but there are a few things my mama taught me to do when I go pump gas. One, you turn the car off. Two, you don't talk on the cell phone. Three, you don't smoke. And four, you hold your breath. 
obviously you cut the car off because apparently I was always taught that if the car was running and you was pumping gas, you could blow up, right? Two, you don't talk on the cell phone because apparently the magnetic fields from the cell phone and the towers and the gas could spark something and you blow up. Three, you don't smoke at the gas pump because, uh, duh, you blow up. And four, you hold your breath because you're not supposed to get high off the fumes, allegedly. Now, with all that being said, Akon, why was your car on while you was pumping the gas anyways? And on top of that, why did you leave the keys in the car? Obviously, if the keys were in the car because the car was on. But I'm just saying, common sense says nowadays with everything that's happening, whether you're in Atlanta or anywhere else, honey, and I'm not throwing up Atlanta. I'm throwing up Atlanta, but I'm not throwing up Atlanta because, you know, Florida is just ghetto too. However, I'm just saying with everything happening nowadays, I feel like we need to make sure cars are cut off. The door needs to be closed and locked while you are pumping gas because apparently if folks got the unmitigated gall to steal things when you're not around and now they got the unmitigated gall to steal things when you are around, we just living in a whole new time. So we got to do everything we can do to protect ourselves. Now, obviously, I don't think Akon's really tripping about his car being stolen because hell, he is like fueling energy and electricity in a few African countries and the man can buy a new car. But it's the audacity for me and the fact that the car was on beauty besties y'all leave your car on when y'all pumping gas at the gas station let me know teach me something maybe my my old school southern roots are just that old school and southern but you know what it has got me this far in my early to mid 30 something years of life it's going to continue to get me further so i'm gonna still stick to what my mama told me but i want to know what y'all mama told y'all how do y'all pump gas Kim Kardashian is back in the news and being sued, and this time has nothing to do with her marriage, but it has everything to do with seven ex-maintenance employees suing her. They're suing her because they're saying that, one, she didn't pay them regularly on time. Two, she didn't provide them with documented pay stubs. Three, she didn't pay their overtime. And four, she did not give them their scheduled meal break. They're suing her basically for violating all types of labor laws, it sounds like, but it gets better because apparently... Kim K's representatives are saying that this is not Kim's fault. They said that Kim hired a third-party vendor so that way the third-party vendor could bring maintenance and cleaning staff into her home so that way they can maintain and clean her property. And the disagreement in terms of payment and discrepancies are between the vendor and the employees and not Kim. Now, here's the thing. I kind of agree. Like, if Kim legit is hiring a third-party vendor for maintenance and cleaning, it is technically, they're the employees of the vendor and not necessarily directly employed by Kim, even though, obviously, they're up in Kim's house and Kim is the boss because they're paying the vendor. But do y'all feel like Kim should be held liable for this lawsuit? I feel like it's a little stretch, but, it, you know, for once, I'm actually on Kim's side for something. But apparently these people said, mm -mm. and on top of that, catch this T. There's allegedly a 16-year-old on this payroll as well that had to work more than 40 hours per week working for Kim. So again, it sounds like this vendor is violating all types of labor laws, even down to child labor laws, child. So I hopefully... Kim is able to work her way out of it and she's not held liable or responsible because obviously to me, like I said, this is the vendor's responsibility, not Kim. What y'all got to say about Miss Kim Kardashian in this lawsuit? Is she responsible or not? Her people are also saying that she would not be privy to the agreements between the vendor and the employees. So I, I again, I feel like I'm on Kim's side, but I want to know what you think. Let me know. It's official. We have a new trailer for Real Housewives of Potomac and a new cast member and a new friend of the show now you know obviously with the whole shenanigans that we talked about between candace and monique monique says i am done i'm not coming back well they replaced her with mia thornton who by the way karen the the grand dame posted a photo of them having lunch together calling it a boss girl lunch and you know how karen is she likes to always cozy up to a newbie as best as she can honey so it looks like she may have an ally a uh, potentially in miss mia thornton now, let's talk about Miss Mia Thornton, but before we do that, I have some questions for Bravo, though. First up, take a look at what Season 5 cast photo look like, right? And now look at Season 6 cast photo. Exactly. Bravo, I know we're in a whole Panasonic, honey, but we ain't got no money for a new cast photo. It is tradition that every season there's a whole new cast photo. They legit took Season 5 color scheme and cast photo literally photoshopped Monique out, photoshopped Mia in, and stuck Mia in a purple dress with the same backdrop and shot it the same. 
If that's not cheap and lazy to me, and of course, and here's the thing, if you couldn't get all of them together because of the whole COVID restriction, it looks like you're able to Photoshop everybody in anyways. So this could have been done individually. I'm just a little disappointed with the season six cast photo because this looks like the official season six cast photo. Bravo, y'all could have done better. But let's talk about what this storyline for this trailer is giving us, y'all. So according to the blogs as well, it looks like Mia is a friend of Ashley Darby. So that's how I guess Ashley is going to introduce Mia into the franchise. We shall see. In addition, we also see clips of Mia talking about her being a girl boss and the fact that, you know, she grew up in foster care and, you know, she came from not a privileged life like most of the housewives. But Mia's story seems to be a little bit more a hard not life, which I'm here for. But here's my, my other question about this term girl boss. How does somebody become an official girl boss? Is this like a certification program? I feel like it's just, just thrown around. Now, don't get me wrong. Mia is gorgeous. Mia is married with three children, has a husband. Mia is educated. Mia is an owner of Massage Envy Franchise Spas and owns a joint chiropractic business as well. So, so mama got businesses, education, and money, honey. But I'm just saying this title of a girl boss. Okay. Now, moving on, it looks like sophomore Wendy and her husband are going to be the spotlight for this season, especially with these new rumors circulating that Eddie has a side baby. Baby, when I'm going to tell you, these reality shows will test your marriage like the SATs. I am already sweating for them. They're not only, they're just into season two and already we're coming for Wendy. So we'll see how Wendy, you know, rises to this occasion, how she manages this. But you know, Dr. Wendy with these four degrees will read somebody, honey. So we'll see how this goes. It looks like the Grand Dame Karen and Giselle herself are still going at it. You know, Giselle is still coming for Ray not paying his bills. And Giselle's over here in a corner crying that her long distance relationship with Jamal, I got the register receipt, Brian's is in shambles, honey. So first of all, Giselle, let it go. We're tired of hearing about you and Jamal, first of all. And then it looks like Karen got some spice that she's trying to drum up as well, celebrating 25 years of marriage with Ray. And also apparently some random woman is texting Ray. It sounds about right for me in these reality TV show drama, okay? Looks like Robin is suffering from a depression or a lack of motivation. I don't know if it's because she's planning a potential wedding or her hat businesses or you know just juggling life I'm not sure but I'm gonna tell y'all something I'm surprised Robin came back as a full-time peach I'm just saying but it looks like Robin brought a new friend to the show her name is Ask Kel Davis maybe that's how Robin kept her peach honey had to bring somebody along for the ride they're saying she's bubbly and she's a pot stirrer now I'm hoping she's better at pot stirring than Latoya was and less aggressive but Mama is calling herself an Ethiopia. I don't know, but she's a, has an Ethiopian background. So we shall we shall see what this Askel Davis is bringing and Miss Born Robin. Okay. Now, also, let's talk about Candace. Candace is juggling a lot. So the trailer is giving us Candace is going back to school for her masters. Candace is working on an album. Candace is trying to act, and now Chris is her husbander. Did y'all not take any notes from Tamar and Vincent? That didn't end well for them. So I hope it ends. It does a little bit better for them. It shows Chris being frustrated with Candace and Candace frustrated with Chris. And it looks like Chris needs a better storyline this season. So now he's stepping in a little bit more as a husbander for maybe it's a little bit more screen time. Hmm, we shall see. And just to kind of wrap up this, this potential drama, it looks like Giselle has already unfollowed Wendy. Um, so it tells me that something might have happened during the filming, that they're no longer friends. There's a blowout. So you know how this goes. They'll probably be unfollowing each other for the duration of the season and start following each other or talk about it during the reunion. But if you're a Real Housewives of Potomac fan like myself, July 11th at 8 p.m. is when it premieres and they're giving us a 75-minute premiere. I can't wait to talk about this with you all and I can't wait to see what this season is going to give us. And on that note, guys, I got to go. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Like this video if you like and leave me a comment. Most importantly, check the notifications and make sure they're turned on. Who loves you? <laughs> I do. And I'll see you on Friday. Bye.